Carbon fiber. Plenty of people say they can push it, but what's the reality? Will the Mark Forge Mark II crumble under intense engineering scrutiny, or is this silver machine a mustard-cutting multi-material master? Let's take it to the 3D printing industry test lab. Boston's Mark Forge has been bossing it since 2013, when founder and inventor of Continuous Fiber Reinforcement, or CFR, Greg Mark launched this industrial 3D printing company. The core premise of Mark Forge is simple. What if robust 3D printed parts were available in end-use materials? Now we could take the word of Mark Forge customers such as the United States Army, Siemens Energy, and NASA JPL's team co-star, where for the latter, Mark Forge systems enabled cutting-edge autonomous robots to scurry through DARPA's subterranean challenge. Or we could We'll come back to tensile testing these dog bones later. The Mark Forge product portfolio includes industrial carbon fiber systems the FX20 and X7, Metal X, and desktop composite machines like the Onyx One and Onyx Pro. But today we're going to review the Mark Forged Mark II. The Mark Forged Mark II uses CFR to integrate continuous fiber reinforcements such as Kevlar, carbon fiber, fiberglass into polymer parts, resulting in builds that are stronger and more impact resistant than conventional FFF. Great, right? But what's CFR? To misquote Aristotle, composite materials are a wonderful example of the phrase the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Now combining two or more materials can result in something lighter, stronger or with increased durability when compared to traditional materials. So people like to mix all sorts into 3D printing filament these days. But the mixing on the Mark Forge Mark II takes place at the part level by which I mean that you load 3D printer with a spool of filament and also a spool of fibre. During printing, both nozzles are active, one for the filament, for example nylon, and the other nozzle puts down a continuous layer of fibre. Once the layer is completed, a blade cuts the fibre and the next layer commences, with polymer filament once again. Repeat the process to make your 3D print. Using chopped carbon fibre adds lightness, however the continuous carbon fibre from the second nozzle ensures the 3D print is also strong, and that's continuous fibre reinforcement. And the Mark II is engineered to deploy CFR in an optimal manner. The sleek metal chassis gives off a minimalist vibe belying the versatility of this printer. Likewise, weighing in is only 16 kilos with a maximum build volume of 320 by 132 by 154 millimeters. There's little to hint at the punch the Mark II packs. Our first hint of something special comes when lifting the lid to reveal the T-belt axis system. Compared to a standard Cartesian setup, the system is more rigid, faster and more accurate. Specifically, the belt configuration is purpose-built to minimize torque on the gantry while still allowing for rapid printhead motion. The linear rails are precision machined to maximize accuracy. The build chamber is fully enclosed and the print bed is unheated. Unheated, I hear you proclaim incredulously. Yes, that is correct. The bed is unheated. And yet, during the two months we've spent 3D printing with a Mark II, not once did we use glue or any other adhesive to ensure first layer perfection during our 678 hours of testing. Testing, we'll get to that soon. Other features include a four inch full color touchscreen with a clean and refined UI, and an external spool holder that serves to create a humid free environment, ensuring safe long-term storage for optimal filament performance. Bed leveling is via the basic three-point method, and whilst manual, the user is guided through the 10 minute process with on-screen instructions. Now how about software? Iger is the Mark IV slicer, and well, it does what a slicer should. The clean UI is a plus, yet once again simplicity hides the amount of work done by Mark Forge material experts to ensure the material performs so well. The few customizable slicing parameters include material choice, layer height, infill pattern, infill density and wall thickness. Options may be limited, but this provides fewer opportunities for user error. On the technical performance side, we encountered a grand total of zero bugs while testing the slicer, and we're happy to report moving between the various menus is lightning fast. Ultimately, Iger is one of the stronger slicers we've worked with. Now to test how to Mark Forge Mark II 3D prints. We printed the 3D printing industry benchmarking model in Onyx PA6 carbon fiber composite, 
assigning each of the individual sections a weighted score based on factors such as dimensional precision, surface quality and structural integrity. The result was impressive, scoring higher than average, with negative precision testing shining. Also noteworthy was the overhang test, tapping out to 60 degrees without problems, and a respectable 20 millimeters for the bridging test. 20 mil might not seem like much, but in nylon this is a great result. The Mark II is aimed at operators who require repeatable production quality parts. To assess repeatability, we ran our circular trajectory test. If you want more info, including some detailed charts on this or other tests such as accuracy, just follow the link in the description. The long and short of it is, in terms of repeatability, the Mark II is far superior to many of the other printers out there. With all the repeatability tests we perform, it is possible to calculate the Process Capability Index. This is a measure of how frequently 3D prints will be out of tolerance when operating at higher volumes. For the Mark II, we calculated that it gives approximately 62,000 parts per million that would be out of tolerance. Very good result for an FFF printer. Right. That's enough of the theoretical tests. What about the real world? Well, for most buyers considering the Mark II, the primary motivation is to 3D print high strength parts. So let's test that. Okay, what does this test show us? This tells us nothing, but this is why ISO 5272 exists, to specify the test conditions for determining the tensile properties of moulding and extrusion plastics. Test coupons, specimens, pretty much everyone calls these dog bones, perhaps you can see why. Our tool of choice for testing the dog bones was the Lloyd LR50K tensile testing machine. This device can pull a force of 50 kN, equivalent to 5,098 kilos, or about nine times the weight of a polar bear. Thanks to the University of Rennes for allowing us to use their expertise and equipment in this part of the testing. In the lab, we put the following dog bones to the test. The results were both visually and scientifically satisfying. We tested carbon fiber, fiberglass, HSHT, and Kevlar reinforcements. If we zoom in on the 10 layer isotropic carbon fiber reinforcements, we see a 6.15 times increase in strength versus an unreinforced specimen. Or in terms of animals, one horse plus one tenth of a horse. That's approximately 455 kilo gain. It's also interesting to note that the same specimen, CF2 ISO, yielded the largest increase in Young's modulus, or E, which is the measure of tensile stiffness. A higher E value corresponds to a stiffer material that deforms less under elastic loads, whereas a lower E means that the material is more elastic and flexible under load. The unreinforced specimen only offered an E value of 0.131 gigapascals. Ten layers of isotropic carbon fibre delivered 3.112 gigapascals, 23.8 times improvement in stiffness. Finally, we look at the elongation at break, which is a measure of ductility. The measurement shows how much a specimen can be stretched as a percentage of its original length before it fractures. The unreinforced dog bone was the most ductile at 15.6%. While well, a part reinforced with 10 concentric carbon fiber layers proved to be the least ductile at 2.8%. In a nutshell, continuous fiber reinforcement as performed by the Mark II works very well. Putting aside dog bones, polar bears, or intents of horses, how does the Mark Forge Mark II handle real world applications? We've seen customers using the Mark II to create impact resistant cases and production systems, and we had success in 3D printing this reinforced Kevlar case. We printed this jaw for a tensile test machine in Markforge carbon fiber reinforced onyx. Support removal was a breeze thanks to IGA optimization. The HSHT material is aimed at users who want to create parts for demanding environments. To test its 3D printability, we used a model of a plastic injection molding setting. It came out very well and more than suitable for this component's intended application in a high strength, high temperature environment. Surfboard fins and plugs in Onyx, and an iPhone 13 Pro Max case with Kevlar reinforcement. Actually, this is ridiculous. <laughs> the shell is far too rigid. But does it work? <laughs> Gears, a crank, ducting, the Mark Forge Mark II breezed through every application we gave it. Does the Mark Forge Mark II cut the mustard? <laughs> Oh. Mm -hmm.
The Mark II is mustard. In no particular order, here are some highlights. The Mark II offers highly efficient continuous fibre reinforcement. Those carbon fibre reinforced parts can be as strong as aluminium 6061 T6. This 3D printer is extremely intuitive to use, and the Eiger slicer squeezes out opportunities for human error. Our tests show absolutely amazing accuracy on small parts, although the experience was marginally less so on larger components. We loved a varied and versatile catalogue of materials. These should meet most users' needs most of the time. That build plate. Even though the plate is not heated, no glue is required, and we didn't experience warping. Mark Forged has done something very special with the Mark II. The 3D printer was just about everything you could ask for in a desktop composite system. With its robust set of well-designed mechanical components, excellent performance, and graceful aesthetics. To complement the hardware, Mark Forge has crafted the Eiger Slicer to be as accessible as possible, regardless of the user's experience level. The program is carefully designed to make composite 3D printing workflow stress-free, ensuring users can go from design to production without getting caught up in the technical details. The only real way IO can be improved is if users are given the option to access the full range of print parameters, as this could be useful in certain edge cases. On the print performance front, the Mark II absolutely shines. Though precision did drop off on the bigger parts, it's not often we come across a 3D printer that doesn't fail a single one of our print tests. But this machine passed every single one with flying colours. This includes our benchmarking model and a wide variety of real application tests. Surface quality as a whole is remarkable and the continuous fibre reinforcement truly packs a punch when it comes to mechanical performance as demonstrated by the Tensile results. Ultimately, the Mark IV system has proven itself to be a prime contender in the composites arena. The machine is a great choice for those seeking a reliable method of printing continuous fibre reinforced parts. If you have the near $20,000 to shell out on a capable piece of kit, we strongly recommend the Mark II. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up.